to the first paragraph. Somebody want to read the first paragraph? Sister Charlene is there. All right, the first paragraph, bottom page 52. The Bible can be described as a living document. It is not living in that it changes, but that we are changed because of it. As we change, whether through the natural progression of life or because of circumstances in our lives, we often see and apply God's word differently. God's word remains relevant in our lives no matter our age or circumstance of life. In this way, God's word remains alive. It is continually fresh and new in our lives. Since God first gave us his written word, scripture has been the moving force in giving us direction and bringing us back to a relationship with God. It is simultaneously a law book, a guidebook, and a source of inspiration. Okay, all right. Um, the, the Bible relevancy. I think it's one of the points brought out here. What makes the Bible relevant? Why is it relevant? It's important for us to know its relevance so that we can make the application. Okay? If we don't understand the points being brought out and what the Bible is teaching us, then we have no way of knowing what to do with it, okay? So it becomes important to understand what the word is communicating to us. Is that right? Okay, and so in knowing that, we can then make application to its relevance, okay? We do that in every other aspect of our lives, okay? If we're, if, we're doing Romeo and Juliet in, in, in school. There's got to be a way to make, the, make it relevant to the study of the students today because to them that was four or five centuries ago. What is that about? What, why are we reading this if we can't make connections to today? Is that all right? Okay. Uh, and, and the word of God serves in that capacity as well. We need to know what's being said to us today as it was said in Bible times through the men of God who wrote as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, okay? So relevance, okay? When we're making it relevant, we're not trying to stretch it to make it fit something we want. It's got to mean what it says and says what it means, okay? All right? We, we don't have to go through any extra this or that to make it apply because the word will set us free, okay? And we're looking to the word to be uh, relieved from the bondage of this life, which is the world's view, okay, and, and how we become captive to the things that are not God or ungodly, okay? So if we're, when we're reading the scriptures, it becomes really important and critical to see the scriptures in that way, okay, All right? Does anybody have a problem with that when you're reading the scriptures? Because if, you, if we are having that problem, we're going to be missing a lot of what the scripture is trying to teach us. Okay? All right? So it becomes important for us to understand that when we're reading the text, what the text is saying to us. Psalm 109, verse 105. I think I've got the right text. That word is a what? Lamp unto my feet and a what? Light unto my pathway. So the Bible is designed to help us see our way, navigate our way, to live our way through this life as we 
look to eternity. Okay? It gives us understanding okay, of what we are to know. So somebody, uh, I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. And 1 Corinthians 2. Let me see if that's what I want. Yes. And we can start reading from verse number 10 for context. And I think this will allow us to better understand the nature of what the word is doing for us. Everybody there? 1 Corinthians 2, and let's start with verse number 10. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit search all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him, even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Now we okay, have received... Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. The deep things of God. Most of the time when we're reading, we think it, a lot of times everything deep because it's kind of rough, you know, it's a little tough here, okay? Uh, but what, what is designed to help us through those difficult times? What did that, what did that text begin, begin with? The deep things of God are known by who? Look at the text. Okay, the spirit, the spirit of the, all right, all right. So, so uh, the, the, the Holy Spirit's role, the, you know, the, the God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God, the Holy Spirit's role is to do what? What did Jesus tell the disciples when he leaves? The Holy Spirit will do what? Comfort, Comfort you and teach you what? All things. Amen? All right? Okay? So, so we know that's one of the roles of the Spirit. All right? So read on. Read on. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God. Okay, so we've got the Spirit of God. We're in 1 Corinthians 2. Um, we're at verse 11. Is that right, Sylvia? 12. 12. Okay. So is a contrast here of what, of what the world or the non-Christian has versus the Christian, right? Okay, read. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Okay, read. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Okay, so not, so... So we now know, if we didn't know before, that the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, is there to help us understand the Word. Okay? All right? So when we begin to study the Word, one of the things we should do first is what? Pray that what? That the Spirit of the Lord will work and minister to us as we read the Word. Okay? First, one of the first things we ought to be doing. Okay? Thank you, Lord, for the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit that, is, that, 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 that Jesus said he would send to comfort us and teach us all things. Right now, I'm about to read the word, and I, and I need you, Lord, to allow the Spirit to speak through me, to me, as I read your word, that I might get the truth of your word. Amen. Okay? That kind of thing. Right? And we all do that. Amen? Yes? Okay. All right. All right. Read. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So who's the, who's the natural man here? We are. No, no, no. The, spirit, the, the natural man doesn't know the things of God. Who are we talking about? Non the non-Christian. There you go. There you go. Don't, be, don't be scared, y'all. Come on, talk, talk, talk. All right? The non-Christian doesn't know that. Okay? All right? So when they're asking you questions about life and what's going on, 
pandemic and all this other stuff, they don't understand the sovereignty of God like we are supposed to, right? So then we, being spiritual, discern spiritual things with spiritual, yes? Okay? And we understand that this, this is a spiritual warfare thing happening here, okay? So the natural man, the unsaved person, can't fathom that. It doesn't make sense to them. Okay? All right? Y'all 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 still there? We we lose anybody? Okay? All right? So that's where we're at. You got two more verses to go. You got you got two more verses to go. You got something to say? We good? Okay. So now we got two more verses to go. Let's finish it up. Go ahead, Sylvia. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For he for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Okay, so when we look at that, this set of, of, of verses, all right, and then we get all sometimes out of sorts, and we read Deuteronomy, is it, was it 29, 29, that the secret things belong to the Lord, right? All right, everybody know that verse? Okay, then we, we come to this text to help us understand that those things that are secrets that God has uh, in, in himself will be revealed through uh, to us through the spirit of the Lord. And that is, that is again, uh, being a Christian gives us that privilege. Is that all right? Yes? Okay, okay, yeah, 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 do something. Wave your hand, you know, uh, nod your head, say amen, something. Okay, got to get you all to say something. I know you lost an hour of sleep, but come on now. All right, okay, so this, this should help us with this paragraph uh, at the top of page 53. Does that help somebody this morning? Okay, all right, all right. Okay, uh, Sister Shirlene, you are reading. Go ahead and, and read uh, the next set of paragraphs. God, God's word is also a source of life. The ability to reproduce is one of the elements that defines a living and mature organism. Human thoughts and words cannot impart true spiritual life, but the word of God can. The only way to become a child of God is to obey God's living word. Okay, living word, okay. Uh, yesterday in class we were talking about a. a the living hope in 1 Peter chapter 1, I think around verse 3, okay? And, 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 and the hope that we get uh, when we understand that, that, that biblical hope gives us uh, something to look forward to beyond this life, okay? And it was a tr tremendous uh, study by Brother... Brother Horner. Okay, somebody turn to Psalm 1 1. Sister Mary and some of y'all can quote it, but let's look at it. Let's read it together. Psalm 1 1. one of, probably one of the first set of scriptures we learned when we became Christians, right? Amen. All right, you there, Sister Shirley? We're going to work your, work your overtime this morning. Now, let's, when Sister Fonby gets ready, we'll be ready for her to. Get the mic, too. Okay. okay. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so let's, let's, stop, let's stop there for a second. Okay. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So you're not hanging out with folk. Who are in the business doing? Okay. What's the next one say? Nor stands in the path of sinners. You're not standing on, you're not posting up, you know, uh, with, with folk that we shouldn't be, okay? Uh, sitting down, you're not getting comfortable with them, right? All right. Uh, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, right? Meditate. All right. Uh, We've looked at this word before, meditate. Meditate, when you, when, it, 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 it's pretty similar to how we define it today. 
uh, the, 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 uh, in, uh, originally it, it uh, came from uh, the animals, particularly cattle, who would meditate on grass. So what are we talking about when they meditate on grass? What do they do? Grass, yeah. When, 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 when it's, uh, who's from the south? Raise your hand. Okay. So when the cow would be eaten, we'd call that chewing the what? Period. Period. Okay. All right. Anybody know how that process works? All right. Talk about the process. Somebody raise their hand. Now, I don't mean to have you regurgitate your breakfast this morning, but we need to make a point, okay? Who wants to talk about chewing the curd? Yeah, it, it is kind of rather. It is rather. That's where the word picture of this word comes from. It's gross. Of course it's gross. But I mean, they chew it and spit it out, and, and sometimes they throw it up and, like, well, um, what 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 they do first? That, that that's coming. That's coming. Right, they them. chew it. Chew they, it. And, and then, then what else happens when they chew it? They what? And when you chew something, you do that's what's the next thing? Mm -hmm. You swallow. You swallow. Okay. And, back up. and then the meditation of it means head. it gets what? Uh -huh. Regurgitated. Yeah. Something regurgitated it's, back up it's, it's and chewed again. Yeah. Okay. It gets swallowed and then chewed again. Regurgitated back up and chewed again until it's really liquid. Okay, all right. That's meditation, lady. Die, you back there? You're not from the south. You don't. You ain't seen a cow do that. Brother, she's shaking her head like Jesus. <laughs> she's shaking her head. Okay. But that's the word picture we get, John. We get that. Okay, that's a meditation on the grass, just over and over and over and over. And so when we are meditating, the word picture here that 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 uh, the psalmist is using. But in his law, does he meditate day and night? What is that saying? Over. over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him. Over and over and over and over. Is it, but yeah, yeah. He keep blessing me over and you know, you, That's what? That ain't a one time thing, right? Over and over again. That's the meditation component of what uh, the psalmist has given us in the word. We just keep over and over, over and over again, like the cow chewing the cud. Chew it, swallow it, regurgitate it, over, down, and how, who knows how many times it's done, but we know it's done more than once because we, under, we understand when we look at his mouth that he done chewed it more than once. Right? Because it's been now liquid coming from his mouth. That same grass over and over and over again. Now, now I'll, I'll leave that alone. So we'll die and be leaving out here going to get us some Pepto-Bismol or somewhere. But uh, 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 it's a beautiful picture, though. I mean, when we look at what the psalmist is asking us to do, or, you know, listen, over and over, over and over. And sometimes... You have to do that to really get the essence of the text because sometimes you can just read it one, bam, got it, boom, good. And then other times I got to go over and over again, okay, right? All right, and we just got to keep doing it because sometimes it, 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 we got to do that for it to really make sense and grab hold to us. Is that all right? We good with that? Okay, anybody, anybody got comments? All right, okay. Yes, sir. I was just, uh, because you're talking about the word being living, and I was just, it, when I was talking about movies, you know, some of my favorite movies, I, I've seen them over and over and over again, but one of the things I found common when I see them again, there's something that I missed before that I came to appreciate on the, one of the over and over times which allowed me to get more out of or appreciate it more. And the same thing, you know, in the application of God's word, how uh, I venture to say most of us have read from Genesis to Revelation more than once, but the more we read it, the more we benefit from it, the more we chew on it, the more we bring it back up and more it comes up and the better we get a grasp on the word of God. Amen.
Amen. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's the design. Yes. So, go ahead. Uh, I know y'all say you. Uh, I'm talking about the um, Saturday class a lot, but the Godhead class on a Saturday and the first day as well. I'm like, I don't remember all of this. But the thing is, like uh, Brother Floyd says, each time you study something, you see stuff a little bit different, at least you should. I feel like I've grown more and I'm just appreciating more, I'm thinking. But it, it, it's just different this time around. And I, I really do appreciate it because yesterday class was the bomb. I'm like, okay, I don't remember mm. all this. But it was really good and I, I thank God for it. Amen, amen. You hear John 3.16 so many times and yes. every time you turn around and hear it, what does it do, Sister Donna? You get some more out of it, don't you? And you've heard it a hundred times. But there's a, a lesson in that uh, and that's the beautiful thing about the Bible. Amen. You know, I mean, I love the Bible because it's, all, it's always uh, refreshing and new. His, his mercies are new every day. Okay? And so uh, that's, that's, that's fun, fantastic. Okay. Go ahead, Sister Shirley. You're still reading for us. Go ahead. And Sister Fami, when you're ready, raise your hand. God's word not only gives life, but it maintains our lives. As spiritually reborn children, we are nourished to maturity through God's word. The illustration of a child's craving milk is a perfect example, 1 Peter 2 and 2. It is readily apparent to us when we see someone who is physically starving. He may look emancipated and sickly. Mm -hmm. The same is often true of someone starving for spiritual nourishment. His life is emancipated his spirit is sick and withering. Okay, so stop right there. First Peter 2, 2. What does that say, somebody? As newborn babes do what? Desire, Desire to send them up for the word, okay? Okay, we should do the same thing for the, with the word of God, right? We should have that desire and craving, yes? Okay. Who can think of some more food references as it relates to the word and how we should respond to it? Any more food type references anybody can think of real quick? Something that, that speaks that way. That's not a trick question. Come on. What, what else? What else? What do we do? What, 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 does, what does the Bible say in reference to mm. food references for us? Man cannot live by bread alone. There you go. But by every but by the word of God. Yes, <laughs> every word she does. Okay, some more. That, yeah, that's good. That's what we want. That's what some more. Some more. Come on. Bread of life, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Bread of life, bread of life. Somebody else? Anybody else? Yes, sir. Divine. There we go. We did that. In, did that a couple weeks ago. Divine. Okay. All right. Connected to it and the fruit that grows from it. Okay. Amen. Blessed are they that what hunger and thirst. After righteousness, what's going to happen? They will be filled. Amen. Okay, so see, these references are designed to give us word pictures of how we should be looking at the word as we are living our lives, right? Okay? You hunger and thirst after righteousness, you're going to get filled. Okay? All right? Any, any, uh, any comments on that? Emaciated. Okay? Uh, that's somebody, you ever seen somebody that you know haven't been eating? They look, they look the part, right? You know, they're skin and bones, or, or, or they look sickly, okay? So if the spiritual mic microscope was on us this morning, uh, how, would we, how would we look is the question. You look sickly, you look uh, abnormally weak, I mean, Put the scope on you, huh? They malnourished. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're yes. Weak, weak. Weak. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. Most of us are sleepy this morning, but you know, you know look in your eyes and say you didn't get enough sleep last night. But 
you can tell uh, beyond that if somebody is malnourished, okay? How do we know when somebody's malnourished with the word? How do we know? Say it, say it real loud. Their lives, their lives, I'm sorry. The way we live. Okay, the their lives, the way we live. Take another layer off that, somebody. Peel a layer off the onion. Go a little bit deeper. Let's get to the garlic. I was saying by the way they speak and talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Somebody else. Uh, somebody else. They asking. won't quote scriptures or nothing about God. Say anything mm -hmm. of God. Yeah. And if they do, it's it's not the truth. Yeah. Ye that are spiritual, right. who is spiritual? You can tell the spiritual where they live. Their, their viewpoint is what God says on the matter. Not uh, somebody else, okay? Not I think or somebody else. What does God say on the matter, okay? And everything that they speak on has God's viewpoint on it. Does that make sense? So you can tell, you can tell that in, through their living and through their conduct. Is that Brother Mark got a comment? I was just going to say, you know, it's it's ironic that when we're hungry physically, we get upset. And the same thing is true spiritually. Someone who is malnourished is always upset, always angry, and acting out. <laughs> oh, that verse. <laughs> yeah, that's a behavior for sure. Okay, all right, all right. Want to tear up something. Want to be crazy. Okay, for sure. All right. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. Yes, sir. Go ahead. When you're um, spiritual, you always be God conscious. But if you're not and you're married nourished, you have yourself on that throne. You're always mm -hmm. thinking about yourself. You know, mm -hmm. well, you just did something to me. Mm -hmm. But when you are spiritual, it, it's about God. You, you think before you react. Yes. Because, therefore, you are trying to please him and not yourself. That self uh, individual always gets in the way, doesn't it? To create a problem. Because that's the, that's the, the issue. Jesus said you got to deny it. And not let it be the determining factor of what, how we live. Let's finish up. Sister Fonda, are you ready to go? Hmm? Are we still no, we are, we're back in, we're in the book now, dear. You got your book? You got your book today? Okay. Uh, right under, uh, let's see, where we are. Sometimes okay. people. Sometimes people may fool themselves and others for a while with outward symbols of health and prosperity. But what we really, but what really counts their soul is withering and dying from the malnutrition and dehydration. Soon this is manifested in, this, in their outward lives as well. But food by itself is not enough. We need to exercise. This is a way of saying that putting God's words into action not only nourishes the soul, but is the energy for the spiritual growth. As we study and apply God's word, it transforms our life. In Ephesians 4.23, Paul encouraged the Ephesians and by extension us to be renewed in their attitude. Some versions say spirit of their minds in Romans 12.2. He wrote that the renewing of our minds transforms us. Every, every believer, no matter how young or mature, must continue the transformation as we continue to grow towards Christ's likeness. Okay, amen. Uh, somebody turn to 3 John, verse 2. And you can find that real quick, it's in the back of your Bible. 3 John, verse 2. Somebody just grab that. Who's got that real quick? Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Okay. 
one thing to have good physical health, but our soul prosperity is more important than anything, right? So saying, I want your health to be as good as your, your spirit, your soul health, okay? And that's what we should be striving for, that, that we not put so much focus, we, and we should uh, to, to some degree on our physical health, but our soul's health is the most important, right? That makes sense? I started back uh, my exercise. I know I, I know you can't tell, but uh, I started back. The doctor said, "Go ahead, you can start." And uh, the last week and a half, I felt different uh, because I started back to exercise. Okay, and I, I'm sleeping better. The exercise is getting rid of. You know, those endorphins and all that stuff working. And, and I'm sleeping better. I'm feeling better, Rodney. Uh, my energy level's up because I'm exercising. Amen. Okay? And any of you that exercise know that that's critical. Amen. And when you don't, <laughs> you feel some kind of way, right? And then you go back and you, you're too, too tired to you get on the bike and ride a little bit, uh, uh, do something, Zoom, uh, Zumba, whatever it is you do. And boom, you feel a whole lot better, right? The exercise of the word of God is to do our spirit the same way. Amen. We've got to exercise what we learn. And that's the what? Application of the word of God. Okay? Turn to Hebrews 4.12. Amen. Uh, we should probably read slightly above that. Uh, one or two verses, but for time's sake. Now, we've got some, uh, Mark has made reference to this uh, from time to time. We've got, started verse 11. Really, we should go a little further, but we, we don't have time for it. Do verse 11 and then go to 12. Remember, we've got Christians here that are struggling. They want to some of, some of them are trying to leave, draw back, and not stay committed, okay? And Hebrew writers trying to get them to stay with God, don't give up on God, okay? And, and be true to God's word, okay? So let's do a verse 11, Hebrews 4, 11 and 12. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Read 13. Read 13. Go ahead and read. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Okay. The word of God will reveal what's really true. Okay? That sword is going to cut you open and lay you open. And, and, and it, it, God's going to see everything. Okay? I, I, can't, I can't discern it. But the Lord can through the word because that's what happens. He just laid open, wide open, everything cut open. Head, all the thoughts, everything. Okay? Everything. Everything I Thoughts, tense of the heart, everything was wide open. Okay, you're talking about an autopsy. That, that, that's, that's it. Okay, and you, you can't fool God. Okay, and all things are open to him. He knows. Okay, all right. And can't nobody get away with it. Verse 13 says, ain't nobody getting away with this. Okay, all right. You can read Revelation 1, 16 and Revelation 2, 16. Uh, Jesus said, I'm coming back with a, with a sword in my mouth. Okay, the judgment. I, I'm, I'm going to find, we're going we to really see some stuff. Okay, so when the screen comes down, Brother Halo, and the projector comes on, and your life shows up on the screen, okay, all that stuff's going to be known. 
Amen? So we, we, we need to not be uh, playing church and, 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 and trying to, you know, don't be trying to fool me because I, I ain't the judge. Don't be trying to do that, okay? But, but, but it's going to be known and you, every deed done in this body, whether it be good or evil, right? So the word of God is going to make sure all that stuff is made known. And the Lord is going to make sure that you know that he knows that you know that he knows that he knows. Okay? All right? Okay. So let's be motivated and encouraged by the fact that we're going to be real about what we're doing. Okay? That we're not playing this thing. That we're going to stay with the Lord. We're going, we're going, we're going, we're going to stay with God. All right? God is the source, not the resource. We've got to stop depending on our resources and depend on the source, the one who makes the resources. Amen? Don't get caught up in your stuff. God provides all that. It comes from him anyway. Okay? Let me give you uh, something to take with you in addition to the text. Okay? Um, when we are obeying God and doing his will, I'll give that to you in a second. Let's get through one paragraph of uh, page 54. Okay, using God's word. I'll try to get through a, uh, at least the, per the top portion of that. Somebody, let's read that. As odd as it might seem, before we can gain the full usefulness of God's words, we have to first believe it. We do not have to understand all of it, but we must believe it. The understanding will come as we grow spiritually. Yeah. There's a lot of distraction in our lives that competes for our time and, and allegiance. Mm -hmm. In the world, there are all sorts of humans created sources of information that competes with God's words for authority. Sadly, many in the world, even though professing to be believers in God, follows those pseudo-truths. Pseudo John 6, 68 is a great statement. Lord, to whom we shall go, you have the words of eternal life. Amen, amen. So pseudo-truths is really... Not, not being genuine, okay, or shamming, faking, and not being true, okay? Uh, God must not become the last resort, rather the first option. We need to seek him first in all that we do. We don't have to know and fully understand it. If God said it, should that be enough? Okay. You tell your children, you do it because I what? I said so. Okay. But why, mommy? Because I said so. I, but mommy, I keep talking. <laughs> you trying me. <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, we <laughs> yeah. So anybody had a grandmama like that before? Hey, amen. 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 So, so, so some things we do because God said it. And, that, and that's enough for me. Okay. I don't fully understand it, but if he said it, it's, it's good for me. It, it's going to be a, a blessing to me, and, and down the road I might pick up on it, but for now I'm just going to obey. Is that right? Okay, okay. Let me give you four quick things, four uh, things that i uh, come up with to might, might help you. Okay. Four, four Ds. Four Ds. Um, Discipline, duty, delight, devotion. Discipline, duty, light, delight, and devotion. Discipline, I do what I do because I have to. I do what I do because I have to. Okay? Duty, I do what I do because I ought to. Delight. I do what I do.
because I really want to. And devotion. I do what I do because I love it and I love God and I love his word and I'm devoted to him and I do it because I'm devoted. I do it because I love him. I do it because I love his word. Whether I understand it or not, God said, and I love him. I love his word. I love him. I love him. Okay. Help me, Janine. I really what? Love the Lord. Okay? All right? And and that's that's my devotion. Okay? Why you why you this? Why you why you always got the Bible? Why you always talking about Bible? Because I love him. Okay. Why you always going about Bible? Because I love him. I really love the Lord. Amen? Amen. Okay. So that's that's where we want to get to. Okay? Because if I do it out of discipline because because I, I got made to do it, I ain't gonna have the right attitude, Shannon. You know, you know, I mean, I better sweep this floor because, uh, you know, mama got that belt. Man, I, I got to do this thing. Okay? All right? I love the word of God. And because of that, I am devoted to him. Okay? Floyd did this illustration with the elite. Okay? Uh, during devotion this morning and he said you got a headache and there's a leave on the, on, on the desk. Okay? And by looking at it will it take your headache away? No. You got to do something. You got to apply. Okay? You got to open this thing up and see what's in it and do something with it. Right? Amen? All right, because it ain't going to go away by just by looking. Okay? Your Bible land on your, wherever you lay it, leave it. And just by looking at it. Okay? You got to open it up for it to do something for you. Is that all right, somebody? Okay? All right. That's what we're going to end it today. Okay? All right? We never could get through these things. We, we could do these. One lesson could take us six weeks if we really wanted to make it last that long. But uh, uh, praise God, Marco finish up and uh, uh, get us going on next month, okay? So we're in our next lesson uh, for the next two weeks before Mark rejoins us. We'll review uh, in a couple weeks, okay? Any questions? Any comments? Verse number nine, uh, lesson number nine, the call for commitment. Okay, call for commitment. Uh, let's begin reading that, page 57. Finish up this lesson, okay, particularly the questions uh, for your spiritual enrichment and development. Amen. We'll let you go right now. Uh, Brother Floyd, you have the mic and close us out, please. Let us pray. <clears throat> 